Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the taught us the truth, and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace, and love to you, prophets and teachers that are hazarding your lives to push this truth. Shalom also be to you, sincere believers, you Akimi, Fu Akwati, and your children that are waiting. We are all waiting for these last and final prophecies to happen in the earth. The return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the promises that were promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, concerning us who are the Israelites. The part of slavery that you very rarely hear about, you know, in which the whole institution of slavery, Esau Edom wants to uh, erase, you know, and redact from the history books. All right, he wants to make it unavailable, you know, for the teaching. You know, he wants to the whole, you know, history of slavery to be striked from the records. All right, because it's ultimately a stain unto him. All right, he's constantly reproached. You know, for the particular part that they play within slavery. You know, you have at this moment, you know, children that are complaining of an ungodly father because ultimately they're being reproached, all right, for the errors and for the wickedness of their forefathers. And the scripture says that this will happen. Now, the part of slavery that you very rarely hear about, which if they do allow you to hear about slavery, then is ultimately the aspect of slavery which shows Jake as being subservient. You know, um, Jake being, you know, beaten, you know, downtrodden, but not the aspect of, of Jake rebelling and rising up against Esau. There's a movie dealing with Nat Turner, and I think it's called Birth of a Nation. You know, that was a very good one. Um... The movie Emancipation, I haven't seen that, you know, but Apostle Tahar has mentioned it a couple of times within his last lessons. But ultimately, you very rarely hear about, you know, slave rebellions. Now, there's a book, you know, that I favor. It's called The Peculiar Institution. And um, I'm trying to make it through the whole book, which I've made it to a part or or. I believe the chapter is chapter three. It's called a troublesome property. All right, a troublesome property. You know, in this particular part of the book is dealing with uh, uh, Jake, you know, getting back at Esau. You know, which um, one thing that makes you marvel is how was it that these very few amount of and I don't mean few as if it was really like a small number of slave owners, you know, and overseers. But on a plantation, all right, you didn't, it, it wasn't like you had a, a military on a plantation, you know, that can keep slaves in check. You will have, you know, the, uh, the slave owner, you will have his family and you will have his overseers, which the slaves on the plantation easily outnumber them. So the fact that they were able to shut up a very few, so many amount of slaves shows you that Jake is under the curses. All right. Judah, Benjamin and Levi is definitely under the curses. Now, a scripture that comes to mind is Deuteronomy 32 and 30. It says, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight, except their rock had sold them and Yahweh had shut them up. So this is the only way that Esau was able to be successful in keeping slaves on the plantation and in check because otherwise Jake would have easily jacked Esau up. All right. They would have easily jacked Esau up and broke, broke his ass. All right. There's another scripture. In the book of uh, Job, the 34th chapter, this is the book of Job 34 and beginning 
at verse 28. So they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him. And he heareth the cry of the afflicted. When he giveth quietness, who can make it make trouble? When he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, the hypocrite reigneth not or reign not, lest the people be ensnared. So it's the heavenly father that really ensnared us. I remember, come on. It says that the one people shall be stronger than the other. All right, Jake is stronger than Esau. That's the reason why they have to create ways, all right, using their sword, all right, and using particular ways. They have to become, you know, um, creative in ways to oppress Jake and keep Jake back. And there were times when they tried these particular methods and it didn't work. So I'm going to read um, some of this book to show that the time is going to come when Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, you know, allows Jake to rise up and break your ass, you Edomites. All right, Jake is going to get roused up and they're going to break your ass, Esau. All right, as it states within Genesis 49 and 9, Judah is a lion's whoop from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stoopeth down, he couches as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And the day is going to come when Jake is going to get roused up on your ass. And it ain't going to be anything that anybody can do to uh, pretty much stop it. Now, there will be like a back and forth thing where you're going to kill some of them, but they're going to get some of you too. Now, to read this book, this is starting at page 129. It says, Some runaways seem determined to make their recapture so as costly as possible and even resist it at the risk of their own lives. One advertisement typically, uh, uh, so, so like it, typical of many warned that an escaped slave was a resolute fellow who would probably not be taken without a show of com uh, competent force. When after a day-long chase, three South Carolina fugitives were cornered, they fought desperately, inflicted numerous wounds upon their pursuers with a barrage of rocks and refused to surrender until a force of about 45 to uh, 40 men, uh, so like 50 men, 45 or 50 men arrived and Southern court so let me stop there, you know, which uh, brings to mind scriptures like Leviticus, the 26th chapter, verse 7. And ye shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred and an hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. So there is mo uh, times when it only took about five jakes to get busy on, a, on about a hundred. All right. Thinking of um, Gideon. All right. In the, in the, in the original 300. All right. How they were able to get down with just 300 men. All right. And that was when Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah was dealing with his people. But because we're under the curses now. All right. Uh, um, all it take is just a few of them. You know, to shut up, you know, hundreds of us. But things are going to change. All right. And it's not going to be like that forever. But you see within uh, slavery, how just a few uh, Israelite men were able to resist, you know, 45 to 50 our Edomite men. All right. It was just uh, three men that were running from Esau Edom. All right. But yet. They refuse to be in slavery. You have these dumbass Edomites that'll say, oh, uh, um, you were better off in slavery or, or slaves actually love slavery. All right, to hell out of here, man. All right, why do you have so many records of slaves killing themselves or rather uh, would rather be killed? All right, and not see the light of day anymore than to go back into slavery. In Southern court, 
in Southern court records, there are numerous cases of runaway slaves right, who killed whites or were themselves killed in the frantic efforts to gain freedom. And look, this shows you. And let me see if I should use this word. Okay, so I can I can use it. This shows you the, the resoluteness, all right, or how resolute are people, which resolute means admirable, uh, purposeful, determined, and unwavering, all right, to be in slavery. All right, although, you know, we were serving a term, we were serving a penalty, all right, a just penalty for our actions towards Yahweh and breaking his covenant. So it was it was already written that this was going to happen to us when you go into the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. But yet. Jake didn't want to be under Esau, you know, uh, as as uh, servants, as slaves to be oppressed. Reading on. It says in one dramatic case in Louisiana fugitive was the de was detected working as a free negro on a mississippi river flatboat his pursuers trailing him with a with a pack of negro dogs you see what they even named their dog negro dogs oh yeah we're gonna use these dogs to hunt niggas all right <laughs> so okay we're gonna use leviathan to hunt your ass finally found him standing at bay and look all of the things that were done to him and instead of you know, re resisting because the scripture says that um, James five and six. Here we go. You have condemned and killed the just and he doth not resist you. So this this individual could have easily, you know, found a weapon, you know, went on an assault, grabbed an axe, a machete, a club and just went around knocking Edomites over the head. But all he was trying to do is work. You know, and, and, and have a life for himself. So here it is after escaping. He He's working as a free Negro, you know, on a flatboat. All right. Just trying to grind and live and be at peace. But what does the scripture say? You, We are for peace. And what is he for? All right. Even in this moment. All right, Jake, after all that you have done to him, all they're just trying to do is just grind down and survive. And you're still conspiring against them. All right, you you you're um, putting knees on their neck, you know you you, you know shooting them, you choking them out, killing them. All right, and and even after all of that, they are still are docile and go back to sleep. But the time is gonna come, as I read earlier within Genesis, the 49th chapter, verse nine, when they do get roused up, and when they do get roused out, who gonna stop them? All right, when you go into the word resist right here in the book of James five and six it means to to range and battle against to oppose oneself to resist so this individual didn't range and battle against you he just trying to work on a flat boat and get some get a couple you know pieces of coin and you know live a regular life but yet reading on his pursuers trailing him with a pack of negro dogs finally found him standing at bay upon the outer edge of a large raft of driftwood armed with a club and pistol he threatened to kill anyone who got near him finding him obstinately determined not to surrender one of his pursuers shot him he fell at the third fire so he i don't know if he shot him three times or he just shot three times and hit him once but yet one of the bullets hit him and what happened was he fell in the water right and so determined was he not to be captured that when an effort was made to res rescue him from drowning, he made battle with his club and sunk, waving the weapon in angry defiance. So even while he was drying, drowning, he was so determined not to go back into slavery that he was trying to hit Edomites upside the head with his fucking club to stop them from taking him out of the water. So this was the mind state. All right, that particular uh, um, Judites or, or Benjamites or Levites, whatever they were, of the southern kingdom 
All right, how desperate they were not to go back into slavery. And this remind me of um, the story in the book of Maccabees when they were trying to uh, capture a particular Israelite, you know, and he threw himself off a building, all right, to fall on them, you know? And, and um, you know, while he was still alive because he didn't die right away, but something happened to where, like, his, his intestines fell out. So... He plucked them out and, and, and threw them at, the, at them, you know, and so much that they marvel. But this is the resoluteness, all right, of, of Israelites, all right, uh, uh, determined, pros, uh, purposeful, uh, purpose, uh, propulsive, resolved, decided, adamant, all right, single-minded. This, this lets you know that when you read about particular stories in the scriptures, all right, uh, um, such as the one that I quoted, all right, that these were Israelites. These wasn't no fucking Edomites, you know? These wasn't Edomites. All right, Edomites have a, a subservient mind state, you know, <laughs> when it comes down to part particular things. But but Jake has like that rebellious, you know, uh, mind state. Uh, let me continue to read on. It says... An effort to break up an organized gang of runaways was a dangerous business because they were often unwilling to surrender without a fight. The fugitive and one well-armed band Salakia. The fugitives and one well-armed band of Alabama were building a, a fort at the time they were discovered. Their camp was destroyed after a smart skirmish during which three of them were killed. Such encounters did not always end in defeat for the slaves. Some runaway bands successfully resisted all attempts at, at capture and remained at large for years. Antebellum records are replete with acts of violence committed by individual slaves upon masters, overseers, and other whites. A Texan complained in 1853 that cases of slaves murder murdering white men were becoming painfully frequent because jake was 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 fed up here it is you you you're taking the, their children you know you selling you know uh the father and the mother you know to a different plantation then you breaking up the children amongst different plantations you know selling them to different owners you know in the midst of um raping you know our sons and daughters all right, raping our wives. All right, this was a miserable situation to be in. Being forced to work, you know, which the last uh, uh, video I did concerning this book was, was how they were working Jake for damn near 24 hours. All right, Jake will have only about three hours to sleep and that was it. You can't survive off that. That should make you go crazy. And that's the reason why the scripture says, uh, let me grab this. The book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. So Jake was 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 mad, man. All right. Um, mad in the sense of being crazy. When you go into the word for mad, to be mad, to be mad, uh, madden, to show madness. All right. Um, to rave through insanity. All right. When you don't have any sleep, that shit start to, to mess with you. All right, you start to bug out, you hallucinate, you see things. All right, but it also affects your blood pressure and it affects uh, um, your brain. So you have Jake's having uh, uh, strokes. All right, dropping dead in the field. All right, and, and Esau was, was working them vigorously. All right, putting rigor upon our people. So hey, you had Jakes that were in their right mind was like to hell with this. We're not going to continue to be subjected unto this. Although it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that this was happening to us as a punishment for breaking the covenant. But you had Jakes that were that were unwilling to yield all right, unto Esau Edom. 
So let me read some more. It says, within the last year or two, many murders have taken place by Negroes upon their owners, reported a Louisiana newspaper. And a Florida editor once wrote, it is our painful duty to record another instance of the destruction of the life of a white man by a slave. Many masters own one or more bondsmen who they feared as potential murderers. A Georgia planter remembered Jack, his plantation carpenter, the most notorious bad character and worst Negro of the place. Jack was, was the only Negro ever in our possession who I considered capable of murdering me or burying my dwelling at night, burning my dwelling at night or capable of committing any act. And I was just being silly, making my voice sound like an Edomite from the South. Slaves like Jack uh, could be watched closely, but others appeared to be submissive, uh, submissive until suddenly they turned on their masters. Even trusted how servants might give violent expressions to a long pent up feelings. One first rate female domestic, while being punished, abruptly attacked her mistress, threw her down, and beat her unmercifully on the head and face. So, <laughs> you even had Jake women, Judah women, that were fucking their mistresses up. All right? <laughs> um, a favorite body servant of a humane master who rarely or never punishes slaves one day became insolent, unwilling to be disciplined. This slave waylaid his owner. <laughs> Let's look up the word waylaid, Salakia. But that's a that's a that's a word right there. We gonna waylay your ass, Esau, in the in the kingdom. All right. The word waylaid means to. To stop, interrupt someone and detain them in a conversation or trouble them in some other way. To ambush, to attack, to assail. All right. To. Uh, pounce on. <laughs> so he dropped his ass, man. Knocked him down. With a, with a white oak club, you know, and beat his head to a pumice. All right, which a pumice is like a volcanic rock that you would use to smooth things out. All right, so just imagine, you know, this particular uh, um, man's head being crushed. All right, imagine his head being, being crushed, you know, and beat in. So when Jake has had enough... All right, this is what happens. And there's particular um there's particular orders, you know, or like um how can I say it? Like not executive orders, but like um plans that you know the the government planned to do, you know, such as um for an example, the King Alpha plan. Within the King Alpha plan, I I can't remember if it's a King Alpha plan or Project Megiddo, but they mentioned how that it's going to be a wrap for these particular suburbs and these rural areas and cities where, where Jake's get roused up and come after Esau. He said that, look, man, they, gonna, they, these, they know that these Edomites are going to get fucked up and that basically these cities are going to get overrun. You know how, you know, it states within the Walking Dead TV series, you know, how, uh, you know, particular cities got overran. Well, this is how it's going to be with, with Jake's when they finally get stirred up. When they finally get roused up. And the Edomites that are in the vicinity are going to get jacked up. So what they're going to have to do is call in the cavalry. They're going to have to call in their military. And which will happen. So Jake's are going to get down on Edomites. But then Edomites are going to turn around and get down on Jake. Uh, let me read some more. It says at times... These acts of violence appear to be for no re no cause. It's for no cause. All right, you, you're oppressing and afflicting the hell out of these people, and this is for no cause. 
I mean, ultimately what Edomites would say, oh, they did it for no reason. Which shows you the fucking proud mind state of these Edomites. They resulted from a slave's bad disposition. Oh, he's just bad. He got bad character. You know, he's just a, 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 a bad minded slave. He's not like the other ones. And that's the fucking way that Esau thinks about you now. All right, because you don't shut up and dribble. You don't get in line. Rather than for from a particular grievance, you know, which the grievance would be, look, you working the hell out of me. You won't let me get no race rest. You won't feed me properly. You know, you're constantly harassing me. You're threatening me. You, you have whipped me before. You whipped the flesh off my back. On top of all of the other torturing devices and methods, you know, that these devils will use against our people. All right, you're humiliating me in front of my wife, my children. All right, uh, uh, you have beaten my wife in front of me. All right, you took my kids away from me. All right, you won't allow me to get any rest. But, but yet all of this is from a bad disposition and not from a particular grievance that you put in hell on me. But more often, they resulted from a clash of personalities. Yeah, the, the personality of the bondsman, all right, and, and the, the, the bond owner from the slave and, 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 and the slave master, from the oppressed and the oppressor. Or from some specific incident. For example, a slave who had been promised freedom in his master's will poisoned his master to hasten the day of liberation. A Southern Carolina bondsman was killed during a fight with an overseer who had whipped his son. Uh, in North Carolina, a slave intervened while the overseer was whipping his wife, and in the ensuing battle, the overseer met his death. Yeah, because, you know, you're beating my woman right in front of me, and you want me to just sit back and just to take that? The most common provocation to violence was the attempt of a master or overseer either to work or to punish the slaves severely. An Alabama bondsman confessed killing the overseer because... He was a hard down man on him and said he was going to be harder. Six Louisiana slaves together killed an overseer and explained in their confession that they found it impossible to satisfy him. Three North Carolina slaves killed their master when they decided that the old man was too hard on them and they must get rid of him. During one of these cases, an overseer called upon his hands to help him punish an unmanageable slave so basically he wanted them to to basically help him jump jump the, the individual not one of them paid the least attention to me but kept on their work so they didn't give him no no uh pay no attention you know but nowadays Motherfuckers will, will run and tackle you and hold you down for the police because Jake is a bunch of fucking coons, man. That's the reason why they're going to get it, too. Reading on, it says these encounters did not always lead to death, but few plantations escape without at least one that might easily have ended in, a, in tragedy. Things moved on here in the old style, except that now and then a refractory Negro has to be taken care of was the offhand comment of planters. And you know what? They will look at Kanye West as being a refractory Negro or Kyrie Irving as being a refractory Negro. And what they did was they modern day buck broke them in front of the whole world. All right, basically to set an example. And this is the reason why you got many different examples of, of Jake killings that happen and become worldwide and, you know, put on the media. But what's going to happen is these things are going to backfire and Jake is going to get roused up. 
All right, Jake is going to get pissed the hell off, and they're going to start getting up in your ass, man. All right, breaking off in your ass, Esau. Now, there's going to be a time when we fight back, all right, <laughs> and we're going to jack you up, but we have to wait on Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. You know, the scripture says in the book of Zephaniah 3 and 8, Therefore, wait ye upon me, Sep Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdom, the kingdoms to pour out upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all them, so like it, for all the earth shall dev be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So the time's gonna come, all right, when, when it's the time, all right, and, and it ain't nothing that anybody is going to be able to do to remedy, you know, or take away from this ass whooping that you and these other nations are about to get. It states in the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as the dew from Yahweh, as the showers upon the grass that tarry if not for man nor wait for the sons of men. And when you read this in the, the NLT, it says, then the remnant of Israel will, will take their place among the nations. They will be like the dew by Yahweh, like a rain falling on the grass, which no man can hold back and no one can restrain. So you ain't gonna be able to restrain, you know, uh, uh, men with spiritual powers. You crazy? Nigga, get the, bam, you know? fucking fly through a wall somewhere all right or get your fucking head punched through all right and 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 be dangling around somebody's arm like a bracelet you know and the remnant of jacob shall be among the gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beast of the forest as a young lion among the flocks of the sheep who if he go through both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver which means that none is going to be able to rescue you all right none ain't going to be able to rescue you all right another scripture that comes to mind is this one right here in the book of amos and i'm going to end on this one this is the book of amos the ninth chapter and the 13th verse Matter of fact, let me start at 11. It says, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Oh, yeah, because the elect are being gathered. All right, and the elect will make up the house of David. All right, just like Israel was in order, all right, and all 12 tribes were together during the time of King David. All right, and he helped to uh, um, order Israel the right. Well, the elect is being gathered all right, during this time. All right. The tabernacle of David is dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. They're going to possess the lands that belong to Edom. He ain't going to need it. All right, you're going to be in slavery. But after that, that thousand year uh, period, you're going to be completely wiped out. And all of the heathen, which were called by my name, which the heathen were never called by the name of the heavenly father. But you had Israelites that were walking in the way of the heathen that were called heathens. Seth Yahweh that do of this. Behold, the days come, Seth Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sow of seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. Which when you go into the word for overtake, the word overtake um, can mean this. As an enemy to attack. All right. All right. Jake right now is already becoming, you know, better than these lesser, you know, uh, uh, elite. Uh, so like um, Edomites. They haven't reached the level of, of the elites yet. Are right, we going to be richer than the elites in the kingdom of heaven? 
But right now, Jake is already doing better than a lot of, you know, Edomites. And even during, you know, the times after slavery, they were doing good. They were setting up communities. They were they were thriving. They had their own. All right. They they were uh, richer all right, then some Edomites and these Edomites out of jealousy will burn these cities and attack them or flood them out. All right, you have drowned towns. You have towns that were set on fire. All right, you have massacres that happened because Edomites were completely je jealous that Jake was overcoming them, were becoming better than them. All right. So um, in retaliation, these Edomites... Will, will fight against Jake or war against them. All right, they will gang up on them. So the time is going to come, though, when, when Jake begins to fuck your ass up and they're going to overtake you, all right? And you're going to go into slavery. All right, you're going to go into slavery. Matter of fact, let me grab this scripture. Because all of these curses and all of the things that we've been through, you're going to receive double back. You're going to receive twofold back. The book of Lamentations, the first chapter. And let me see. Actually, it's Lamentations. Yep, the first chapter beginning at verse 21. Then ha uh, they have heard that I sigh, there is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou will bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. So you Edomites are going into slavery. You other nations are going into slavery. And you're going to feel firsthand what it feels like to have done the things that you have done unto us. See, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh said that you're going to be like us. The book of um, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verse 1 through 7 says that these curses are going to come on you. So you're going to know how it feel to have your family broken up. To have the father go to one side, one plantation, one owner, one oppressor. To have the mother go to another oppressor. To have the children go to different oppressors. You're going to feel what it feel like to watch your family get fucking broken up right in front of you. And I mean that in the regards of families being separated, but then also getting they, they, a foot broke off in their ass and you can't do nothing about it. Or you getting your ass whooped and your wife and your children got to sit by and watch it. This day going to come, man. All right, according to the scriptures. See, I'm 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 heated now. The book of uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. They that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and they that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. The book of um, Psalms 149, and I'll end on this one. It says, um, let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen and to punish and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to exe execute upon them the judgment written. This is this honor have all his saints praise Yahweh. So it says to exe uh, execute them the judgment that's written is already written. All right, it's already written in the heavens. It just has to, to play out. All right, within this, this, uh, um, you know, within reality. All right, it has to, like the Apostle Ramla would say, it just has to play out within this dimension. But that judgment is already written. Your ass is going into slavery. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. 
All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well. Peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. All right. Kwan Bakayam, a Shalom and a Bad Babal. Shalom.